I'll be going back to my regular schedule soon. Ish. In a few days. Okay, going second. We'll start with probably the Bound Tormentor. He's playing, um, Trial. We'll definitely need this. I don't think Sunset's really useful in this match. Let's toss it. I also don't think the Mind Lathe is that useful. Let's toss it as well. What is this nonsense? That means I'm gonna steal crap. Damn it. Wonder, by the way. The heck? Saj Mech Wander? What? Is this nonsense? What? This is more nonsense than I'm playing. I'm playing a lot of nonsense, and this is more nonsensical. What the heck? Um, you, you just got a to-do list, and I'm here to learn. Well, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, I don't typically explain all of my plays anymore, I used to, but if there are any questions, like if there's any specific play that you see that you don't understand, don't, yeah, ask, right? That's what I'm here for. Um, I learned a lot from watching you see, well, thank you. What's up, Poncho? How you doing? Oh, that Zephyr, though. That Zephyr. That Zephyr. here so we can body block against this. Alright. This won't be able to kill this. I get my own wander. Check this out. <laughs> uh stupid wander in my hand. Oh, wildfire. Okay. This isn't great, actually. Maybe I should have just backed off and played the Reaper, but... Meh. I'll have to do. Wow! Sick. Aha, I stole it. Damn. That's funny, I steal it, and then it dies, because it loses the plus one, plus one. That's pretty sick. Well, we know he doesn't have a Star's Fury or Wildfire Ankh anymore, so he can't, like, punish this position. I mean, he could always just, like, blood or something. We could have used Staircase to prevent that, but we need to put this in position. Oh, what? Damn. Killed. I was not expecting the Alpha. Hey everyone, Stephanie here. So what you just saw was a clip from a stream by Husuku. I will put a link to his Twitch channel in the video description below so you can check him out. Uh, he's pretty well known in Duelist community. Generally, I try to stay out of people's streams if I know that they're streaming. Uh, 
because he was streaming at a pretty unusual time and I happened to run into him in queue. But yeah, I have actually been playing Duelist for four seasons now, and I've placed S rank in three of them. I haven't been doing that many videos though, uh, like you'll find on my channel my first impressions of the game and a few, uh, and just a few games, because I am still a little bit self-conscious about my play and I feel like I have a lot to improve, so I I'm also aware that people watch videos for the purpose of trying to actually learn how to play, so I don't want to mislead people or anything like that, which is why I haven't been recording that much. But since people have been expressing some curiosity about uh, what I've been playing, I decided to just share this video with you guys. So my current uh, deck that I've been testing is a Wanderer Sage deck, which is a little bit of a meme deck. Because if you look at the Vitruvian Generals, Xerix is the one that makes the most sense with the Wanderer buff. So the idea behind Wanderer is you have one copy of each spell in your deck, and the payoff for only having one copy of each card is that on the 6 mana turn, you can cast Wanderer, which will give all of your minions plus one attack and plus one health. So Xerix is really good for spamming minions, like he has the Bloodbound spell, which is to summon an Iron Dervish, so all of his dervishes become three attack and three health. And generally, if people choose to play Wanderer with the Vitruvian faction, they would play Xerix. They would also play uh, Cataclysmic Vault, which turns uh, the entire central column into sand, and from the sand will spawn dervishes. So generally they will play like uh, dervishes, obelisks, uh, and basically take advantage of the fact that the wanderer buff buffs minions. But I decided to just be a little bit less uh, conventional and play Saj. So just for fun really. Uh, Saj has a very interesting backstory, which you can read more about in the lore section of the game. I'm not going to go into too much depth, but basically uh, the story behind Saj is that she is actually created as part of a war effort, and she's basically like a servant to uh, Xerix, but then she ends up kind of developing like a personality of her own and surprising people by doing stuff outside of the role she was designed for. So her Bloodbound spell is to deal double damage to minions, so this general is really good for uh, swing turns where you suddenly have this sudden burst of damage and you uh, take out a bunch of minions and you try to make the board swing in your favor. So Saj is most commonly played actually with the uh, the Trubian Trial. So the trial is when the general reaches the other side of the battlefield with an equipped artifact. Each artifact gives your general a tier of ascension. And the tier of ascension means that you gain keywords like uh, flying and celerity and so you basically can fly all over the board, activate twice per turn, you know, there's like a bunch of shoot from across the board. It basically makes your general into a powerhouse, and that's what Saj is most commonly played with. So she's not commonly played with Wanderer, which is typically used for buffing minions. So the reason I decided to pick her for this, uh, for the Wanderer trial, which is normally used to buff minions, is I like throwing people off, and I like each game to feel like a different experience. So if, you know, the thing about Artifact Saj is that it tends to be very predictable, um, I'm going to put a link in the video description below actually of an artifact Saj deck that you can check out if you're interested. Uh, but the thing is, those kinds of uh, decks tend to be very predictable and they tend to follow a very set pattern for each game, so it ends up being very repetitive and I don't like uh, my games to be repetitive, like I like each game to feel like a new experience and to feel surprising. So that's just what I personally enjoy. Um, but with that being said, let me just go through this current list that I'm testing and talk about the idea behind the card choices. So first of all, we are going to have just like the Wanderer staples. So those include Blood Tear Alchemist, Maw, Primus Fist, like those are Wanderer staples. And then some of the other cards I have in here are Healing, 
which is pretty important for sellers because the gem was held as a resource that can be used to make value trades with the Bloodbound spell. So you want to preserve the hold of Saj as much as possible. Then I also have a bunch of ways to protect Saj. So Falkius uh, makes it so that the general gains plus two attack and takes no damage this turn. Then... Oh, actually, I also tried running uh, Iris Barrier, but I found that because I have Planar Foundry, uh, which is to draw an artifact, and generally when I cast Planar Foundry, it is to look for Wildfire Ink, which uh, enables Saj to attack in one straight line from across the board, so I would always get super annoyed when the Foundry returned Iris Barrier instead of the Ink. So right now, in this current version, I don't have Iris Barrier in the deck. I probably should, but I don't know, I'm still testing this deck. So the thing about Blast is that when it activates, you can attack from across the board and wipe out an entire row of minions. So when people recognize that you have this, what they will try to do is approach your general and attack you so that they take charges off your artifact. In which case, I have a bunch of cards in here to punish that line of play. So I have Fireblaze Obelisk, which uh, at the start of each turn, it keeps summoning dervishes. So it basically makes it very costly for opponents to approach. And if you combo this with uh, Star's Fury, it can make for a massive swing and damage, which could either close out the game or cause a ton of damage to the opponent's board. So that's something that can happen if they try to approach. Another thing is I have Sworn Avenger, which uh, increases in attack whenever my general takes damage. Also, Wild Tar, whenever an enemy attacks, this minion gains plus three attack until the end of your turn. So basically, uh, whenever you know the opponent tries to attack to take charges of your artifact, like I have a bunch of triggers that go off and ways to counter attack. Now I also have some other stuff in here uh, that are designed to help with draws. So Science First Wish is buffs a minion and draws a card, it makes it easier to cycle through the deck looking for combo pieces. Um, Dream Shaper is a little bit situational. I do have a couple of other golems in here. So basically when you play Dream Shaper, when you have another golem on the board, you draw two cards. I find myself uh, getting the draw effect maybe one in every four games or so. Most of the time it's pretty hard to get the bond effect and you just play this as a body, which is okay because um, having something to play on turn one that costs two mana is always good. So the other golems I have in here are Celebrant, just create a mana tile, can make it faster to ramp into Wanderer, Golem Metallurgist. Uh, Windstriker, which equips uh, a staff of Ikir to my general, giving my general plus two attack. Really good for stacking with the uh, Bloodbound spell, which basically makes the general have eight attack to a minion for one turn. Um, and the Portal with Guardian, I sometimes play this and I sometimes also switch it out for a Bloodbound Mentor. It really depends. I'm not sure which one is better. So with the Mentor, you can duplicate the Bloodbound spell and achieve eight damage to a minion. Uh, with Portal Guardian, it makes it so that whenever you summon something, this minion gains attack and opponents are going to want to remove this as soon as they can. So that makes it more likely for your other stuff to stick that's more important. So uh, other minions that are more important for Saj would include like Incinera, which causes her to be able to move two additional spaces uh, and position strategically. Tigris is also like it amplifies the damage because whenever your general attacks um, a cub, which is a two attack one health minion, joins and can uh, and it can attack immediately, so it just amplifies the damage. I also threw in a wings of Mechazor because this has an airdrop effect. It can be played on turn one if you're a player one. Uh, it can be used to block mana tiles or to take mana tiles as necessary. Then I have a bunch of other positional effects in here, including Astral Phasing, which can be comboed with the Wanderer, send it across the board, do a bunch of damage. Uh, Repulsor Beast, get things into Blast range. 
a silhouette tracer to move the journal wherever. Uh, and I also tried playing with Recombobulus actually, but the current version that I'm testing doesn't have this because it's a little bit too situational. I also tried playing with um, Artifact Hunter, Lost Artificer, and Matter Shaper, but the current version does not include these cards because again, they are a little bit too situational. Uh, and I feel like the other four drops I have in here are more important. So Lightbender uh, is a, another one or a staple really good for dispelling uh, like Grominians or, or Centiles. Um, if it's the Cataclysmic Vault matchup. Mirage Monster is in here if uh, the opponent plays something that's super threatening and you either uh, copy this to make it easier for you to deal with their super threatening minion or you kill the minion with your general and then you have their minion <laughs> instead. Just pretty powerful spike. Oh and also Central Reader and Blood of Air, staples in any Vitruvian deck, these are just really really strong removal options. I also considered putting in like Wither, Wither and um, Entropic Decay because uh, in the Wanderer deck you only get access to one Blood of Air and one Sensual Reader, but then I thought about this and I thought, you know, Saj is supposed to be really good at taking out minions, so maybe I don't need these. Um, Finally, for the finisher, I have Saber Spine Alpha and Star's Fury. These are my main finishers. I also tried uh, playing around with Monolithic Vision, which was fun, but then it kind of interfered with my replace options because, like, I would sometimes save, you know, save like a Sensual Reader or save uh, an Alpha for late game, and then I find myself facing really awkward replace choices if I want to replace those or just transform my entire hand into random Vitruvian cards. So I found that this card messed around with my strategy a little bit, especially if I get bad luck, if I don't get good Vitruvian cards off of this. So this is the current version that I'm testing. Um, still a work in progress, but very fun. And now I'm going to turn off the face cam, show you a replay and then I'm gonna try to record two games live. So, yeah. All right, so the replay that I'm going to show you was actually against a recognizably meta deck, and that was Arcanist Shidai. So let me just quickly talk about my understanding of this deck. So Arcanist Shidai is based off spell chaining. Uh, it's basically, they use the general Shidai, who provides a spell sword which is a one mana spell and then you get two spell triggers off of activating the bloodbound spell and then casting the spell sword whatever it is you can make the chakri avatar grow really big whenever you cast a spell this minion gains plus one attack plus one health kindling whenever you cast a spell your arcanist minions gain plus one attack owl beast whenever you cast a spell your arcanist minions gain plus two health and there's also Prismatic Illusionist, whenever you cast a spell, summon an, another uh, Arcanist, basically, on a random nearby space. Uh, so the idea behind Arcanist Shidai is to use spell chaining to generate a whole bunch of really, really big minions. Um, and Scroll Bandit can also help with stealing opponent spells and giving you even more spells to cast. So this is one of the stronger meta decks out there right now, and there are basically two ways to defeat it. One is to dispel their minions, uh, and the other way is to try to remove their minions and prevent them from building up a board. Alright, so I'm going to go to my replays and show you uh, how I played this match, and I'm going to turn on the real time. Uh, so this was my opening hand. I did have monolithic vision that I was testing at the time. I decided to just replace the expensive cards uh, for my opening hand, replace the Vision and I believe the Grincher because uh, out of these two 5 mana cards, I prefer to cast Incinera as soon as I can. Okay, so my opponent uh, gets to go first and they play a Scroll Bandit. 
So here I basically only had one three drop in hand, which was my Sworn Avenger. So I just played that and then moved forward. Even though this does expose my general to backstabs from the minion if uh, my opponent has like a mist dragon seal or something, it does mean that my avenger also gets buffed. So they have uh, to make a choice here between removing my avenger or continuing to develop their board. Because they don't have enough mana to do both. Well, I guess they could like phoenix fire my avenger and then... Uh, develop their board, but then they will start to run low on cards in that case. Okay, so what my opponent did here was play out the Prismatic Illusionist uh, and leave my Avenger alive. So here I decided to take out the Scroll Bandit because I didn't want the Bandit to steal my really important spells like Blood of Air, which I might need later. So for the sake of mana efficiency, I cast Planar Foundry to draw a card. Uh, and I got the Iris Barrier, which I also was testing at the time. And I decided to take deny my opponent the center mana tile. And just play out my Dream Shaper. And also use the Rasha's Curse to eliminate the Bandit, because uh, Arcanist Shidai is unlikely to run artifacts, so I won't be needing this for artifact removing purposes. Instead, I'll just be using it as like a small rush minion. So Rush's Curse uh, destroys an artifact and summons a Wind Dervish. Then I played out the Dream Shaper. So here... Uh, I'm starting to build up a board, and the only minion they have on board right now is their Illusionist, which is a big problem because if they manage to get a lot of spells going, um, they can generate quite a number of Arcanist minions off of the Illusionist. So here they start with 4 mana, they have access to 2 tiles, and let's see what they can do with 6 mana. I have to point out here though that even though uh, they have access to two tiles, it does mean their general gets to move into somewhat of an unfavorable position. Okay, so here they played out their Owl Beast. Uh, whenever they cast a spell, the Arcanist minions gain plus two health, so they also cast their Bloodbound spell and then the spell that they got off of casting this, which was Murasame. Uh, so the all of their minions powered up by 4 health this turn. However, it also means that my psionic strike recharged this turn. And I was able to combo my uh, wind striker which gave me plus 2 attack. And then I multiplied 4 by 2 using the psionic strike. So I had 8 damage and was able to take out the Aldis. And because my general took damage, my sworn avenger powered up by 1 attack and was able to take out the nearest uh, Arcanist. And now all of their stuff is out of reach of my... like they can't attack my Avenger. Um, and I also have a flying minion on board now to contest whatever they play next. So here they are going to have to use like a Phoenix Fire or some sort of damage spell to reach my stuff. But it's also likely that my opponent isn't running Phoenix Fires because uh, with the Arcanist deck, I know that you need a lot of support cards like Juxtaposition and Miss Dragon Seal and Inner Focused, stuff like that to support your minions. So maybe they just don't even have Phoenix Fire, who knows. But here they played out a huge threat, which was the Four Winds Mega. Let me just pause for a second. Uh, so. Four Winds Mega, whenever you cast a spell, deal 1 damage to the anime general and restore 1 health to your general. So the intention behind casting this was to chip charges off of my artifact uh, through casting spells. So here they've positioned defensively because they don't want my general to be able to attack anything. So the normal attack range, as you can see, I, this is the attack range. It means all of their stuff is out of range. However, 
uh, my Sworn Avenger does have 3 attack and my Flying Unit does have 1 attack, so even if I didn't have anything else, I could have sent these two guys to kill the Mei, but it also means that the Illusionist gets to stick. But if you look at my hand right here, I replaced the Celebrant because it wasn't necessary. That's more of an early game card, and here I have uh, Incinera in hand, which will allow my general to move two additional spaces. The other option is to cast Grincher and hope to get um, like a blast artifact or a ranged artifact, that would be another option. Um, but so since I have the Incinera here, you can see what I did. So I played the Incinera in an offensive position, close to the center of the board. And this allowed my general to go after the four wins, and it also powers up the Avenger, and allows me to take out the Illusionist, which is the other big threat on board. The reason I decided to um, hit the May guy with my general instead of, you know, uh, sending these two guys after the Megai and my general after the Illusionist is because I wanted my uh, Wind Striker to still be alive. So here my opponent has fallen behind on board but they do have 6 mana and 6 cards in hand so they have quite a number of things they could do this turn. So you can see here that my opponent is mousing over the uh, Arcanist minion, probably intending to power it up, and it's moving toward the Incinera, so probably gonna attack the Incinera. Like, my guess here was that they would play Kindling and then try to spell a chain to increase the attack of the Illusion to hit the Incinera. Right, so they played the Kindling there. Uh, which left them with two mana left to card, uh, left to cast two spells. So they cast their bloodbound spell and then cast the spell they got off of the bloodbound spell, which powered up the uh, illusion to four attack, and then they hit the incinera with the minion. But here, uh, let me pause. What really confused me was why my opponent didn't just. Uh, hit the Incinera to kill it. So they left the Incinera on board. It could be that they just ran out of time and forgot to click. You know, sometimes people uh, get nervous. I do that a lot too. Like if I plan to do something and then I don't execute all the moves. But that's probably what happened because leaving this on board is a really bad idea. Uh, since for me, it's now the 7 mana turn and I can definitely cast Wanderer and power this up and make this harder to kill and also this will have 6 attack and uh, cause even more damage to my opponent. So here I played Wanderer. And then... I believe I took out the Kindling this turn. Yeah, so since my Incinera was on board, it allowed my general to move in a longer range than usual, and I also had my Bloodbound spell active, so I cast my Psionic Strike and took out the Kindling. I think I hesitated for a bit there because I was thinking, uh, does my opponent have a way of dealing 10 damage out of hand? And I was also trying to see if I had some a lethal play on board, which I don't believe I had. So here my opponent resigned. And uh, it was a little bit of a risky play for me at the end because if my opponent happened to have... What's that card called? Right, if my opponent happened to have Spiral Technique, uh, that combined with their general would have been able to uh, kill my general on the final turn. But because the Arcanist deck re uh, relies on a lot of cheap spells to keep the Arcanist engine running. I made the correct guess that they didn't have this. So yeah, that's uh, a replay that I was happy to show you and now I'm going to try to record a live match. <laughs> okay, this is Audioloom. He is a great memer. Uh, 
he probably is playing in some weird <laughs> weird combo deck. Right, so I'm just gonna replace the expensive cards. I have Bone Swarm, which is good against Regnora. Oh, it's Trial of Magmar. And then say hello. So Trial of Magmar is to cast seven uh, damage buffs, and then after you cast the seven spells, any minion that you summon will gain a rush and frenzy, so they can attack immediately and cause a whole bunch of damage. Interestingly enough, the most common general I see for Trial of Magmar is Starhorn, the Seeker, because they burn through cards really quickly. Uh, looking for those attack buffs. Alright, so I have this to answer eggs. Um, what do I want to replace? I probably want to keep this in case my opponent has like Primal Flourish or anything like that. This is also good if they use... Um, an artifact that makes their eggs have Force field. This is also good because it helps chase down eggs and it also buffs my general's attack. So I don't think I actually want to replace anything. I probably just want to play my healing mystic then. Yeah, you know what? I'll come up and contest the mana tiles and encourage my opponent to trade their cryptographer into my healing mystic. Or they could also take tiles with the cryptographer. And leave my mystic alive for egg hitting purposes. So the shroud is a bit of a dead weight in this matchup. Another crypto. Alright, the Bone Swarm is looking really good here. Uh, let me think through my options right here. I could Rasha's Curse to get rid of the other egg. Okay, but Bone Swarm is definitely happening. Let's do that first. Uh, could also just hit it with my Mystic. We just. Okay, I think I'm gonna go for this. I wanna see just dispel. So my opponent only has access to one mana tile this turn. I have a tiny board lead, which is not much, but I will be able to um, play Wanderer pretty soon. Kujata. Okay, so my opponent is gonna play out a bunch of stuff. <laughs> right, okay, so... Oh, that's a good, um, I mean, it allows me to kill the egg. I could also dispel everything. <laughs> that's another option. Um might actually be the best option now that I think of it because the Kujata and Quilby's like if I teleport there and hit the egg these two things are gonna continue to cause trouble so you know I'm just gonna dispel everything and I guess kill the Quilby's 
yeah. <laughs> Greater Fortitude. How many more spells does my opponent need? He's only cast one out of seven, but he probably has some alternate win con, would be my guess. Uh, Yeah, this looks like a wanderer turn right now. Okay. I'm gonna play a wanderer in my opponent's face. Uh, play around the Kento a little bit. I have some positional effects in hand, so I'm not too worried about retreating from the eggs. I also have an EMP if my opponent tries to pull off some weird grow combo or something. <laughs> Propagate Rage. Let me guess, he's gonna hatch it and... Huh. Nope. See, this is what I mean. Audio Loom plays some really weird stuff. So hold on a second. So I have 7, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's not enough to kill my opponent. Oh, <laughs> watch out for Red Aquarian does what he's doing. If I wipe his entire board though, that's not gonna happen. Uh... Can kill him, what? 7, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. <gasps> Wait, hold on a second, I can! <laughs> I, ha I forgot that Arash's curse can also target generals. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Okay, so my friend just told me that the turn I hit the eggs and played Ephemeral Shroud, I should have played the Golem instead. And I said, didn't that also require leaving an egg alive? And he said, no, because I can actually uh, walk forward, play the golem on the tile, and then bone swarm instead of bone swarming first, like I did that turn. So let me just replay that for you guys. Right, so it's this turn that's coming up. So here my opponent had two cryptographers and two eggs on the board. And what I did was I did bone swarm immediately. What I should have done was walk forward, take the tile. Uh, that would give me five mana and then play wind striker on the tile, which would give me two more mana and then I could bone swarm. So that would have been better than playing the shroud because then I would have a little bit more board presence. And also both the meta tiles would be taken instead of leaving one open for my opponent. So yeah, thank you to Morgan for catching that. You know, one thing I really appreciate uh, about this game is having the replay options so you can always go back and rewatch your games and share some of your most memorable games with your friends you know, it's just really, really good both for teaching purposes and learning purposes. Which is one reason I appreciate this game so much. Vitruvian versus Vanar. 
Okay, we got a Vanar opponent. Uh, this is the General Fei, who has the Bloodbound spell, which can cause constant damage, and I am going first. I think I'm more likely to need the Silhouette Tracer than the Mirage Master because Fei typically does not run at large minions. So I'm going to keep uh, the Celebrant for the first turn play. Raja's Curse could be useful if uh, they play Snowpiercer. Um, right, so let's start with the Celebrant. Generate a mana tile and then if I get access to two tiles next turn, I can teleport to my opponent's side of the board. Or I could play this depending on what they do this turn. So uh, against Vanar in general, you don't want to stay on your side of the board for too long because they have uh, like infiltrate minions and also Wailing Overdrive and stuff like that, which means that their minions get attack bonuses on your side of the board. Also, some uh, meme Fey decks run Glacial Fissure, <laughs> which causes 8 damage to everything in the center, so you want to be on the other side as much as possible. Not in the center and not on your side. Right, so my opponent just played out two Flame Blood Warlocks. It's definitely a burn deck. Um, I'm unlikely to need the sand swirl. Ooh! That changes the idea completely. I could just uh, eliminate both of the flame blood warlocks this turn. But it's sort of awkward because uh, with artifacts, like my opponent can easily chip charges off my artifact uh, using their warbird. This seems like a really good play though, just because of the efficiency of getting rid of all of this stuff. So I think I'm actually going to do that, and I'm going to retreat. Then I can teleport if necessary. So let's get rid of all of that stuff. Um, and I don't want my celebrant to be killed, but I don't think I have an option. So it's either here or here, and here is probably better. So let's move the Celebrant in there. Um, so there is one more round before their Warbird charges. They could play Cryptographer to charge it up immediately. Um, but I still get to keep my artifact for a little bit longer. So if they leave the Celebrant alive, if they don't have Snowpiercer, then I get to ramp into 6 mana next turn. It doesn't look like they have the Snowpiercer. Okay, they're gonna try to come to my side of the board. Oh, they played a Malicious Wisp. That's a good play. It de uh, delays the Wanderer. Um, however, I do get to kill it. So... I am actually going to just kill it, I think. I could play this on the tile to deny my opponent the tile, but then they could always just move up and take the other tile, so it's not a big deal. I might as well just leave this open. Oh, 
Or I could also play it defensively. Yeah, this thing can fly, so I can play it defensively actually. Uh, step back a little bit and just kill the wisp. Alright, so my opponent is still uh, out of range of my general. They get to chip one charge off using the warbird. And then they would have four mana left to do stuff with, so let's see what they do. Looks like they are planning to take out the Celebrant instead of contesting their mana piles. They might have another Malicious Wisp. Nope. Oh, Bloodbound Mentor, I see. So they chip two charges off my artifact. That's a good play. Right, so uh, right now I think that I probably should, instead of playing Wanderer this turn, I probably should uh, actually get rid of the Mentor. But then if I, if I teleport down there into the corner in order to shoot the Mentor, that's a really bad position to be in. Let me just replace the Skippy first. Mirage Master. Uh, I think I have to though, it's too bad, so... Yeah, I'm gonna teleport down there, uh, kill the mentor, and then just build up board a little bit. Okay, my opponent is at Anting, playing something on the mana tile. Thunderhorn. Oh, they're gonna- oh no. <laughs> now that's a common Banar combo that I completely forgot about. Uh, Thunderhorn plus Aspect of Shinzar. Should have positioned differently there. So it turns this into a battle pad which hits the Thunderhorn and then clears my entire board. That's a really really good play by my opponent. Um, so my artifacts are gone. Definitely don't need this. Uh, right, so I'm gonna spread out. Let me just think about this. Because th that's 4, 6 damage. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I could just die the next turn actually. If they combo, they only have three cards in hand, but they are likely to be holding on to their third Flame Blood Warlock or like. So I think I have to kill the Thunderhorn this turn. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this and move to safety. That was the lamest. Oh, actually I should have done the Rasha's Curse. I forgot that this doesn't have the Wanderer buff. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> right, so... I think I'm dead though. Regardless. Because 7 health is not enough against Faye. I guess I could have done Rush's Curse and played the Dream Shaper as a body blocker. Yeah, that would have been better than what I did. <laughs> I forgot that the 
Okay, I get to live one turn. I don't think that's enough though. Oh, they had a cryptographer. <laughs> okay, never mind, I'm dead. Yeah, Fae tends to be a bad matchup for anything that's artifact uh, dependent. Alright. GG opponent. <laughs> Alright, we got a match with the other Vitruvian general, Xyrix. Uh, and here's our opening hand. Too many 5 drops for sure. I think I'm probably gonna want to keep the Tigris because the extra cubs can help contest dervishes. And I am unlikely to need the sense world this early, so we're gonna replace that for now. Hope to draw something better. Right, Zephyr is a better first turn play. Either that or Golem. Dang, it's Flame Blood Warlock. So this is an aggro deck. Uh, we got that in case they have. Um, anything sand tile related so I'm going to make a defensive opening just stay out of range of their stuff right and I got my rescue rx which is good if I need the healing I think I'm probably gonna play that in a safe position so that when it finishes building I get health Okay, they are going to take two of the mana tiles. Fireblaze Obelisk. Dispelling that is an option. So the thing is, if I leave the flame blood alive, then my Zephyr doesn't get to stick. I'm going to replace the golem actually. What I could do is play a Tigris, hit the obelisk, and then use the cup to clear the flame blood. But it still means that my Zephyr dies because the dervishes are gonna spawn. So you know what, I might just have to dispel the obelisk. I don't see any better play actually. I mean I could also use the fizzling mystic to clear the obelisk. But no, I think this is better because it means getting rid of the flame blood as well. So they might want to trade that flame blood for my lightbender. Um, next turn, my psionic strike recharges, so I get to get double attack on the obelisk. This turn they have 4 mana so they can't remove my Zephyr. Okay, they're gonna play another obelisk. Rasha's Curse. Oh, I see, that kills my Zephyr because the obelisk gives um, plus 1 attack to dervishes. Alright, it might be time for me to retreat.
Retreat, play an obelisk of my own, and play a rescue RX. And the rest of this hand looks good. Okay, so there are dervish spawn in a bad spot, which is lucky for me. This is their 5 mana turn, so they could have Sensible Leader or Blood of Air. Looks like they are coming forward to hit my obelisk. Star's Fury. But that only gives them two dervishes. Oh, I see, they're just gonna take out my obelisk. Fair enough. Alright, no. Um. If I come forward, I. Am pretty likely to be hit by dervishes, so I'm gonna come forward a little bit and stay high up. Play the wonder in their face. Play it there, actually. And I don't think I need the Rasha's. Right, so this hand looks better. Next turn, I'm probably gonna drop the EMP. To dispel their obelisk. Or if they play an Amar a healer. Is that Cataclysmic Fault? Nope. They are powering up the dervish. Oh, interesting. Okay, so they're gonna combo the Falkius oh, with the dervish and the Primus Fist to kill my Wanderer. That's a good play. Um, so here I can play out Tigris, I think. Or I could just dispel everything. Let's dispel their annoying obelisk, I think. And, um... Take out the Falkius. I'm gonna move to the center, which is a more favorable position. And I'm gonna get rid of the bone swarm. Right. Scion's first wish. My opponent only has two cards left in hand. <laughs> so the thing about the burn deck they seem to be running is they don't seem to have a lot of card draw or maybe they were just unlucky in not drawing the card draw okay so there is the spell jammer they are going to try to replenish their hand man i really miss my falkius all right so i should definitely hit them in the face for eight here. Um, and then I want to get rid of the spell jammer to prevent them from topping up their health too much. Do I have lethal here? So three, four, five, six. No, I do not have lethal. Place to Skippy. Uh, 
This is annoying. Alright. So let's play all the Tigris then. And just clear my opponent's board. Okay, so my opponent has a dervish in play, but nothing else. I don't think they can burst me down from 13. So they are going to have to choose between um, using removal on my EMP or my Tigris. Can't do both because only 8 mana. And because the EMP has flying and Tigris has ranged, he can't run away from either threat. Dune Caster. Is that gonna go face? Another Dune Caster, dang. Scion's third wish. Oh my god. Am I dead? No. I survive with one health. Wow. <laughs> okay, so they conceded because they were one off lethal. Dang. That was a lot closer than I thought it would be, but it was a really interesting concept. Like aggro Xerix. You don't see that every day. Definitely could have positioned the Wanderer better to avoid it getting killed by the Dervish. Uh, so yeah, that's the value in recording and sharing your games, is that you can always pick up details on how to improve. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you appreciate what I'm doing. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.